Hello and welcome to Data Waypoint, the Zero-G podcast where we talk about how data and machine learning reshapes the world of aviation. My name is Manuel and I'll be hosting today's talk. And today's talk is the very first one that we're organizing here at Zero-G. Together with Alex Apple, Principal Solution Architect and dear colleague, we'll be talking about the breakthroughs of computer vision applications on the intelligent edge. We'll discuss what it is, what use cases are ideally realized on the intelligent edge, as well as possible challenges that lay ahead for airlines, airports, and other organizations to incorporate the intelligent edge into their overall data and cloud strategy. Welcome, Alex, to the very first Zero-G podcast. We know each other pretty well. Uh, Are you excited about joining today? I'm very excited, Excellent. our first podcast. It's our very first podcast, and we'll talk about a topic that we've been working on together for a very long time, which is computer vision applications deployed on the edge. And I'm very excited about that. We've been, as I said, working on a lot of these kinds of projects. And uh, first of all, for people who don't really know what edge compute is or intelligent edge, can you explain a little bit what it, from a technical perspective, what it is? Yeah, so the intelligent edge is or comprises AI applications that are deployed near to the actual data sources. I mean, that is basically also what edge computing is about, that you bring the computing of the data near to the data and directly process the data. And it is also um, a very, you know, a very good way to leverage near real-time insights out of that data. So that's a big use case, especially for our computer vision applications that we implement. Excellent. So before we come like to a couple of use cases that we've worked on, what is like an everyday example of uh, intelligent edge where people are more familiar with uh, intelligent edge in a day-to-day life? A real-life example would be autonomous driving where, you know, there have to be real-time decisions made on how the car goes and so on. And there are cameras everywhere. There's a lot of computer vision involved as well. But it's getting more and more important also in the logistics industry or aviation because there are a lot of operational processes that need to be optimized or can be optimized and that requires real-time, near real-time decisions. So basically where everywhere where there needs quick decision making directly at the event, so to say, either for real-time decision making and for safety reasons, that's where Edge comes in. So why is th- has this become like now more and more of like a big topic? If we look at like Google um, setting up uh, or selling up their uh, their own Edge uh, applications now to their customers, as well as like Microsoft Azure with their Azure Stack Edge, this has become like wildly popular these days to talk about Edge and Edge decision making. Can you explain a little bit like what was driving that kind of like decision making, or like what was driving this kind of like trend in this technology or trend in this direction? Yeah, I mean, we had in the past, um, you know, we had big data and data lakes. So, you know, where the new oil, the the data. Yeah. So you collected whatever data you had Mm -hmm. and had to curate it in a data lake and then do analytics based on it. And that's basically all post post postmortem data. Yeah. So it's after the fact. Mm -hmm. And so this has been there for years and is well established as well in in the, the enterprises. But what is missing or coming up now more and more is like really real-time decision-making and real-time actions on Mm -hmm. the data. And this is important in a lot of domains. Um, So um, I guess we could actually mention also 5G networks that are on the horizon because uh, basically 5G, um, the the promise of 5G is that it's very short latency. Mm -hmm. Latency is very low, so Mm -hmm. you can get the data very quick. Mm-hmm. Uh, through mobile networks, mm-hmm. and then it has to be processed on the edge. So basically, all of these, you know, mo- mobile providers, data centers, they're basically edge data centers, and um, the cloud providers jump on that with their edge appliances that they that they bring out now, in order to connect these edge data centers with their cloud infrastructure. Yeah. So maybe like like an example uh, a little bit. So uh, what are like the ideal circumstances, the ideal business case or process, so to say, uh, where edge compute can make a real difference into day to day operations uh, or day to day safety within operations? Can you like describe the three key qualifications for people listening in, uh, thinking about use cases where edge compute might be a good kind of like fit to resolve their issues? There are, there are three big categories of mm-hmm. things that define or that lend to an edge application architecture. And the first thing is the data volume that's happening. Yeah? So um, if you think about computer vision or so 
with you know high resolution and so on that that's big data or a lot of data sources that is not feasible to be transferred directly to the cloud because you need this huge bandwidth internet bandwidth and so on so that data has to be processed on the edge um, the other thing is you want to gain near real-time decisions out of it so you have to be fast processing it so low latency is the other thing that you have a low latency for making decisions and and, and you know um, your algorithms have to be fast to work on this data exactly low latency meaning that the time between processing the information towards it uh, is within the hands of end users is as low as possible exactly and um, the other thing is also data privacy yeah so um, especially if you think about the airport scenario there are passengers there's ground handling personal and so on this is all personal information that needs to be protected because of the european data protection law so it has to be treated carefully and you know a lot of um, companies are actually also very reluctant to transfer this data to the cloud because mm -hmm. then it's out of their control or they think it's out of their control or so whatever we don't want to go into that but um, that's also something that says okay we have to process it on site on the premises of the customer and it shouldn't leave the customer premises making sure that everything is data private as possible so you've already talked about like some uh, so of about these three qualifications so complexity of the processes complexity of the data and latency of processing that as well as data privacy at zero g we've been working on a couple of user, uh, computer vision applications most notably our deep turnaround application extracting timestamps from an aircraft turnaround as well as other processes um, can you walk us through a little bit why intelligent edge is crucial to extracting this kind of like data at an airport yeah so we have all these things there actually that <laughs> i just mentioned so we have a high data volume because we need you know a good resolution of the, of the video streams and we need also a high frame rate in order to really recognize the processes as they're going on we have then low latency decision making because you know we want to feed this information these events into operational systems directly on the premise so there are operational systems of the airport or airlines that uh, you know need that data in order to react on so if something is going wrong something is missing that one aircraft getting a pushback at the same time for example something is missing you know fueling is not there or pushback is not there all these delays at the airport is costs for the airlines and, mm -hmm. and the airport itself or could be dangerous could be dangerous could be something happening or you know or yes you you they want to optimize and react on this that's that's one thing i mean optimization comes more later on that they analyze is that going well is it you not going well data. and you have to have the data that's uh, actually one the thing why we came up with that product because mm -hmm. what's happening once the the aircraft is landed is basically a black box or there's very very little information mm -hmm. and we generate that information with our solution Absolutely. and uh, so this all lends also data privacy obviously lends to an edge uh, architecture awesome so not every use case though um, would be having this kind of like latency demand or this like kind of like situation so i can imagine like counting people walking in or out of a terminal at an airport or walking in and out of a warehouse latency is not really that important obviously data privacy is but um, like from the complexity of the data like the video input or the sensor input those are like very like low complexity kinds of use cases are there like other use cases where you'd say this is where edge computation is actually actually also very important because of the complexity of the data itself the complexity of the sensor input data can you give it like an example there yeah i mean we, if we talk about computer vision most people just think of cameras exactly. 2d some rgb webcams cameras hanging. some webcams anywhere but uh, I mean, there's more and there are more important sensors actually. So 3D vision is a big thing uh, mm -hmm. that we encounter with a lot of customers in the industry sector or logistics sector, where we need to extract the dimensions of objects and things happening, dimension and orientation. Mm -hmm. So if you think in a warehouse, you have a lot of you know, pallet packaging processes and what people are interested in so which dimensions have these packets actually how are they you know packaged on on uh, most a ideally pallet. packaged on a ULB yes also how many of them you know counting these and, and and so on or if you're unloading them what are the dimensions where do I store that in my warehouse so to make these decisions as the, st the stuff comes in mm -hmm. you need 3d computer vision 
and there are different kind of sensor technologies. So you could have stereo cameras, you know, with two cameras that you know extract look at one object. Look at one object, and they have a. It's like you know, um, yeah, with your two eyes. That's mm -hmm. that's basically that's what's how, happening. How 3D works. Yeah. That's how the 3D works. Uh, but there are other sensors as well. So there are um, time of flight cameras. Mm -hmm. They are based on lidar, and they produce point cloud data. And this is a very this is a vast amount of data that. Um, it's not feasible to transfer this anywhere before you actually interpret them. So it has to be processed, pre-processed on the edge um, to extract the information that you're interested in and combine that with your algorithms, your AI um, that, you know, extracts the insights that you're interested in. Yeah, making this very tangible, a shipment comes in at any warehouse and before it's like processed and put away or stored anywhere or sent somewhere else, uh, you put it through a 3D scanner and, or 3D cameras and that sensor input data is then processed on the, on the edge. So you'll have directly feedback on how big the dimensions of a specific object are. That's a very effective way to optimize processes so you don't have to measure it or like just like uh, game it, how big a specific object is before you store it or process it again. Though like listening to all of these kinds of like use cases, whether it's like an airport uh, implementing a computer vision application to uh, extract timestamps from an aircraft turnaround process or 3D cameras and 3D sensors all sound very complex. Yeah, um, how do you, or how do we, because we work on these kinds of projects together <laughs> most of the times, how do we uh, ensure, in your words, how do we ensure that um, this kind of like very impactful, very helpful kind of information and technology has a big impact as soon as possible with uh, with our customers? Yeah, to reduce the time to you know train these algorithms. Um, I mean, it's AI because there are neural networks involved, especially with computer vision, and these are pretty complex networks. And um, neural networks need a lot of training data in order to you know be stable and 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 produce stable results. So this training data, extracting this training data, it's supervised learning means it has to be labeled. You have to teach the algorithm what is what it is actually so that it you know learns what it is itself mm -hmm. um, and that needs a lot of examples in different you know circumstances with a lot of var variety um, so this is naturally something that is you know takes quite some effort and, and is, is a longer process um, what what we are using also in our projects is 3d simulation for this so we have 3d scenes that simulate it and that we basically reproduce it and also these this the technology if you know any computer games modern ones they are very very realistic unreal yeah. engine unreal engine for example we use that in project where we um yeah to come back to that example where we did um simulate damages on the aircraft surface yeah so that's also something it's very then, expensive to come with your hammer and make some yeah, uh, also, damages also, on the aircraft to train an AI. Exactly. You don't want to damage it on purpose, and that's not re that these are not realistic damages. Mm -hmm. So uh, the other thing is they are very seldom. Specific kinds of damages happen not very often. Mm -hmm. yeah? Fortunately, yeah, it doesn't happen that often. Mm -hmm. So you, there's, it's very hard to get data, real data from it. Um, and, but with simulation, you can you know, simulate it. Um, and use that to train the model and, and then add little real data in order to make it, you know, the model uh, perform well. Perform even better. Exactly. So this is what we use and, and what is a good way in order to, you know, minimize or, or you know, have a short time in order to, to train your model. And maximize impact as soon as possible, basically. Exactly. So, aside from the whole cost of developing an edge application, the other worry that a lot of organizations have around running it, specifically within their existing infrastructure. So how do we mitigate that? So airports are old, warehouses are old. How do we le leverage the existing infrastructure? Yeah, I mean, first of all, we, we don't want to, you know, start projects with huge upfront costs. Yeah, we, we want to, you know, start little and be able to scale. And so one cost factor are definitely the edge devices that we need for our computer vision algorithms. But there with hardware as a service, you know, that's the new, the new pricing model basically of the cloud providers. You can rent these devices and these are powerful, real, you know, well-equipped devices that you could even, you know, stack together to clusters. So you can run Kubernetes clusters on the edge in, in your own premises and also, you know, realize failover scenarios or, or zero downtime deployments are really robust, you know, cloud native technology on on your premises on the edge mm -hmm. and you can rent that start small and scale you know you just have a monthly 
monthly fee, monthly cost involved. And the other thing is, what is the sensor hardware in place? You know, so what are the cameras that are already there? What kind of cameras, what orientation is it? You know, what's the quality? What can we achieve with that? So that's the first thing that we look into. So we first try to evaluate what is in place and what we can achieve with that before we consider you know, new cameras and renewing everything. And um, we have, I mean, our goal is to optimize the business process and to you know, have an impact and have a, a benefit you know, uh, for the customer. And surely uh, a big point would be to reduce the upfront infrastructure costs. That is a big factor to um, you know, reduce that or maximize the impact and the output for, for the customer. And so you have to balance that, you know, it's, it's always between the quality and, and the, the business case you want to solve and what, what can you do with the infrastructure in place. Basically looking first at what kind of technology is already there from a camera hardware perspective, from a networking perspective, see what process we can optimize with that and then try that out before we scale it and making sure that infrastructure costs remain as low as possible. Exactly. So what we've learned is that Computer vision on the intelligent edge is now hot and happening, extracting real-time situational in, uh, data from any given situation, whether that's like an autonomous car or aircraft turnarounds or packages delivered in a warehouse. Processes that directly where the events are happening to reduce latency and ensure data privacy and security. Puts it into a backend system and that enables a whole new world of real-time decision-making and reliable data. Exactly. And that's going to be uh, the exciting future that we can then use to optimize processes uh, in real time. Thank you very much, Alex, for joining and uh, excited to run the next project with you. Me too. Thank Excellent. you very much. Thank you. See you next time. Thank you.